I, I often think of uh, these sort of moments as waves. And so we have these waves that come on shore where people are so outraged and so pissed off that you see these amazing uh, movements happen. And when I was growing up, I, I felt like I was in one of the uh, moments where the water was receding out. You know, folks had sort of uh, been granted access to, to higher education, um, to some professional jobs. And so for me, growing up, I felt, you know, alone as a student. I, I didn't get my first Latino book until I found Nuestra Palabra after college. <laughs> and I was in private school my whole life. So that's, that's why that became so important to me. But, uh, but I think what we're seeing now is another wave come. And I think with the internet and all of the things, you know, that, I, that inspired me to get involved uh, back in 2000, um, getting cameras that were affordable now yes. and a platform to distribute them, like the internet and, 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 and so many other things. You know, having a radio station like KPFT, Pacifica, here at WBAI, to allow me to learn how to use this equipment and get it out, you know, without even having gone to any sort of a communication school was, mm -hmm. was very, very powerful. So I think what we've seen right now is the emergence of students and youth being more politically engaged through the internet. And that's why we found out about this too. And that's why we were able to connect with the students so quickly and all of these other organizations. So, uh, so I'm, I'm encouraged uh, about the next 10 years. And I, I told Tony earlier and Liana that these students that are in these classes right now that have been banned are going to be awesome people in 20 years, 10 years. I'd, I'd check their names and just you know do a follow-up five years from now and see what they're doing. That's amazing. And to Lori, as a woman, a Latina woman, how does this youth will make a to the previous era? Wait, can you repeat the question? I'm sorry. As a Latina woman, how, how do you feel this movement compares to previous eras? Well, um, I don't know if I, the comparison would be, you know, we take 10 steps back to, to, you know, one step forward, 10 steps back, and you're seeing all of the civil rights movements of the 60s and all of the progress that they've made is now coming up for rebuttal by folks that don't want us to be there, don't want us to be part, they want to make us feel like we're the other, um, that we don't belong in this country, but but we're part of this country, whether they like it or not. And so, you know, the, the youth movement, it's just inspired me a lot. I, you know, I can't really speak for the 60s, because of course it wasn't around, but for me it just feels like <laughs> that the youth is just so inspiring, because, you know, we, I got involved with Nuestra Palabra, and I too have to say, I didn't... I didn't know about Latino literature really until I got involved with Nuestra Palabra and then it opened my mind to so many authors that were Latina, Latino authors that, that weren't just writing about gangs, that weren't just writing about, you know, the, the typical, what you would say, stereotypical La Latino experience, which of course is the first things that get published because that's what people want to read about. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the youth that were involved, like we went to schools and we read to schools and it was really so fascinating to talk to the youth. And, you know, there's a lot of pushback right now in our society that tells us the youth don't know what they're doing, that they, you know, that they're they're lazy, they don't want to learn. But being part of this group and now being part of this caravan has just, I don't know, it's like hyper -inspir inspirational. Just, uh, you know, the students that are in Tucson do need our help. And I, you know, as a Houstonian, I was more concerned that they were, they would get the impression, you know, like, why are these guys coming from Houston to come give us books? You know, who are they? What are they trying to do? But after talking to them, I see how isolated they are and really how much they're appreciating us bringing the attention to this movement. And, and those kids need to be supported because even in the hostile environment that they're in, they're having walkouts. They're, they're doing what they think is right for them. And, you know, technically, I mean, they have they have school board members that are lying about the things that are going on in the schools, like on the radio, like just outright lying about what's going on with the students. And the students are underage, they're not 18, so technically what they're saying is they need to shut up and do what we tell you because you don't really have any rights right now. Yeah. When you're 18, you can, maybe you can think about it. But by that time, their spirit's downtrodden, you know, they, they, they don't get the support they need. So, so for me, this 
youth movement right now is the most inspiring thing that I've ever seen. And, you know, in the 60s, I'm sure it was great. <laughs> but, um, but right now, for me, this is the most prominent thing, and it, it just really, I, I want to share that with folks. That's amazing.